Hi everyone, welcome to the Trend Profits Weekly Update for May 31st, 2024. And what a wild month of May that was. And what a wild day Friday was. If anybody was watching the markets on Friday, that was an insane roller coaster of a day. So we're going to stick to our normal agenda here. Brief recap of last week and what drove it and what we have to look forward to for next week. I'm not going to talk that much about trend profits itself this week because I'm trying to keep the focus more on the long-term performance. The strategies are pretty much all doing as expected, and the story really hasn't changed. It's really the riskier ones that are having a tougher time right now with the very violent swings in the volatility. So you know this by now if you've been watching these videos. So we're just going to focus on the long term, and then we'll do more of a detailed wrap-up uh, for performance at the end of the quarter. So we'll do that at the end of June. Okay, so let's see what happened last week. I mean, really was a negative week. It, it was just really, really wild. But really what last week was really just technology, which continued to drag things down. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. There was a lot of profit taking in NVIDIA last week, which pretty much dragged the whole sector down. And eventually all of the Microsofts, all of the, the, the fangs, all the big ones like that started coming down. But as you can see, still sitting on incredibly healthy gains. Yes, the Dow, the Dow had a really rough week last week. And, you know, aside from Friday, where it was, it was a big day, it really underperformed a lot. So, and you can see that now from, you know, how far away it is from the 52 week high, which is really the all time high right now. Emerging markets, international equities, okay, well, emerging markets continue to struggle. That, that's partly due to a high US dollar. And then, of course, bonds, which actually wound up flat last week. I mean, it, it was wild. I mean, you saw the 10 year treasury bond jump, jump up quite a bit last week. So, you know, really. It's just really the same story. We're also focused on inflation and bond yields. I mean, that's really what's driving everything right now. The markets are reacting to anything that's going to affect bond yields. So the longer bond yields stay higher like this, the longer equities are going to stay in this really, you know, kind of like a no man's land right now. So then if we look at it, this is the, the weekly returns heat map that we tend to show, that I tend to show just really the risk on versus risk off. So everything above pretty much TLT or even the dollar, we can consider the risk assets. So last week, if we just look at the, the first column here, we can really see that the, you know, it was a risk off week and you can start seeing a lot of, and this is all relative to the S&P 500. So what this is telling you is that ARC underperformed the S&P 500 by 4%. So you can definitely see a little bit of the rotation out of some of the higher beta sectors, the exception being biotech and, and even small caps to a certain degree. Now, the interesting thing when I look at this is continuing to see the strength in utilities. And I just recreated the exact same graph here, but doing it for sector. So again, this is relative to the S&P 500. So this means energy outperformed by 2.4% last week. But really, you can see last week was driven by the sell-off in technology and a little bit behind the industrials. As industrials had a rough week as well. So, but if you look at utilities, just look at the degree of outperformance that that we've really seen in utilities this year has really been incredible. And, you know, look, I'm not sure how much of that is really driven by, you know, if people expect interest rates to come down, the higher dividend paying sectors are going to do well because people are going to be looking for that yield. And that's, you know, that's kind of what we saw here. But, you know, it doesn't explain the fact that bond yields have come back up. We've lowered our expectations for interest rate cuts, yet utilities continue to still do well. So that's just really more a matter of the risk off sentiment that's really taken hold for, you know, well, I guess some of the weeks. It just doesn't really, you know, when you start seeing the markets hitting all time high and you're saying, well, you're telling me risk off. Well, it's an interesting market that we're in right now. I don't know what else to say. So let's go into what drove the markets last week. So it was really a quiet week until we hit uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So it was really Thursday where the GDP numbers, this is the second estimate for Q1 numbers. And, and we're seeing everything here as really, you know, there were no big surprises in it other than a couple of revisions down. We are seeing a slowing economy. And that's what this is telling you. It's showing here that a 1.3%, and that came in on terms with the consensus, but, you know, prices are going up. 
So, but we knew this already. This is not new. This is just a second print of the estimate for Q1 GDP, but we are seeing signs of the slowing economy. And of course, you know, slower PC, um, the core PCE prices that we're seeing here continue to be high. This is again an inflation measure. And then when you look at Friday, and first off, when you see how bad Canadian growth is right now, like, this should be prompting a Canadian rate cut, but we still saw a little bit of inflation prints in Canada the past couple of weeks that were a little bit higher. You know, I, I think the Bank of Canada is in a really tough spot right now because the Canadian economy is not doing well, and yet we're still seeing some inflation. So let's hope there's not this kind of stagflation talk coming back. And then we had the big sigh of relief that the core PCE, this is the preferred measure right here. This is the preferred inflation measure of the Fed. Now, it came in slightly below consensus on the core. That's the month over month and the year over year came in pretty much right where everyone was expecting it. That was a sigh of relief. So the markets initially rallied Friday morning. It didn't last long. and It wasn't the strongest rally. And then the markets tanked. You saw at one point semiconductors, the SOX index was down over 3%. So if you're doing SOXL, the three times leverage, you saw it down 10% at one point. Then all of a sudden, at around 3.15, the markets took off. Now, this could have been some kind of algorithmic automatic rebalancing that tends to occur at month end. I really don't know. I don't think anyone really knows. What we do know is that there have been studies that... The amount of trading that now goes on between 350 and market close is crazy. So it, it's really it was an unbelievable thing to watch where all of a sudden, 45 minutes left in the day, the market just took off. And then the Dow ended up up, what was it, about 1.3, 1.4%. NASDAQ was almost flat. So it, it was really a, a tremendous reversal. So let's hope that carries into next week. Now, what do we have on tap for next week? A lot. Let me just change the view here. It is going to be a very busy week. You have inflation. Oh, sorry, that's June 12th. I need to go back this week. Pardon me. Okay, you have all of the ISM numbers coming out and pay attention to here. All right, the price is paid. Do we still seeing higher prices paid? I think everybody's still seeing the manufacturing below 50, which means we're technically contracting. So there's been like a rolling recession in manufacturing, and we haven't seen that improve. So almost all of the strength in the, in the American market has been coming from the services PMIs, which comes out on Wednesday. So you're going to have these ISMs, and these are tremendous leading indicators. They just haven't worked very well for the past six months to a year. You can tell that to some of the top uh, investment strategists out there that base everything on macro. They've been very dead wrong on it. So you've got job numbers here with the jolts. And then you're going to have the non-farm payrolls on Friday. So this, where is it? Over here. Then you have all the in employment stuff here. So what we're expecting here on the employment side, that's U.S. and Canada. So again, the forecast is for uh, 180. This website's doing 150. So this is projecting a another, you know, disappointing, not disappointing because it means what, what you're expecting. We are expecting to see a slowdown in employment. So again, let's see. If the trend from last month, which was weaker, continues, and maybe we can start seeing a trend, which would be, I guess, kind of good. It's like bad news being good, but we don't want to see it slow too much. This is really the point where we're at right now. We have to see how much the economy is slowing down and is inflation slowing down with it. That's what we need to see. And then at the same time, keep an eye on the bond spreads, spreads of corporate bonds versus governments. Like what I mentioned last week, what I put in the newsletter, this is what will start showing signs of an antsy market that is getting nervous about a recession. And that will be a result of is the market, is the economy slowing down way more than, than the soft landing scenario? It's going to take time. For that to play out there's no way we're going to have that answer in the next month or two months unless things get really bad so that's it for me for this week that's pretty much a good summary of everything here's the contact information if you require anything from us 
you know, I love this community. I've been actually reaching out to a lot of our subscribers lately. Thank you, everyone who's answered my emails and I've been talking to you. It's been great. Like I said, I'm trying to get this community going. And, you know, thank you to everyone out there who supports us. Thank you to everyone who's been sending us referrals. We love you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week.